All right, time for pre-trib rapture moment number 11. The question comes up, what will trigger the rapture? What's the thing that's going to make the rapture happen? All right, we've been here and we've been waiting now for, you know, centuries and thinking, when are we going to leave? You know, a lot of people were saying in 1993, thinking then the seven-year tribulation, then 2000 to start the millennial kingdom. Well, that didn't happen. A lot of people try to predict other dates and things in other years, but it doesn't happen. So what is it that's going to trigger the rapture, the pre-tribulation rapture? Ephesians chapter 1, verses 10 through 14 says that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, in other words, when the time is complete, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. The body of Christ right now is separated. All right? We're one in Christ, but the dead saints are in heaven with Jesus Christ. The living saints are right here on the earth. You're looking at one of them. There's another behind the camera. And a lot of you out there that are watching are saints. So that gathering together is going to happen in the fullness of times. When it's complete. Verse 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom after, also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Don't worry about losing your salvation. Okay? Somebody says, once saved, always saved is a lie. Well, maybe in another dispensation, but not now. Okay? Verse 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession under the praise of his glory. When is Jesus Christ going to be glorified fully and completely? When the redemption of the purchased possession happens. When the body of Christ is complete. And he says, okay... I've purchased my last Christian. I've bought them. The last Christian came to me with a broken, contrite spirit and said, Lord Jesus, please save me. And they come in that broken, repentant spirit and say, I want to be saved. I need to be saved. I don't trust my own self-righteousness. They turn from that. And they come to Jesus Christ as their only hope for salvation. When that last soul comes like that, and the Lord, and I don't know when that's going to happen. I don't know what the number is or who the last soul is or whatever, the last saint in the body of Christ. I don't know. You don't know either. So then what should be our job as Christians? Well, brother, i got to come out here. I'm building a survival hut over here, and I have it stocked with enough food to last me for seven years or three and a half, depending on what you believe. Uh, is that my responsibility as a Christian? No. My responsibility, your responsibility is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. To go out there and call out a people for the name of Jesus Christ. Get them saved. Because when that redemption, or when that purchase possession, when that is done, the fullness of times comes in, when that is completed, we're leaving. That's when it's going to happen. That's what's going to trigger the rapture. John chapter 10 verses 1 we're going to read down through. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out, up, up, and away. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Yeah, I am the door. By me, if, a man, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in, at the rapture, and out, come back down at the second coming, and find pasture. What's the pasture? The millennial kingdom. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep, but he that is an hireling, 
and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hiring, hireling fleeth, because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. Are you sitting under the ministry of a hireling? Is your pastor scared about the way the world is going and he's telling you, Jesus isn't coming. He's not coming for you. The Antichrist is coming. The end is coming. It's happening. It's going to happen. You're going to have to endure to the end to be saved. You're probably not going to make it. Most people are going to make it. What's he doing? He's a hireling. He has no love for the sheep. He's worried about his own hide. All right? Hey, do you trust that God is going to spare you from the time of Jacob's trouble? Yeah, I do. Then get busy working for Jesus Christ. Don't worry about what's going on in the world. Oh, World War III could be coming. Yes, it is coming. That's what the Bible says. Are we going to have to go through part of it? I don't know. Possibly. I know we're not going to be here for the revelation of the Antichrist. I know he comes out after when, you know, when the first seal is open and the body of Christ is in heaven before that. I know that. I've proved that from Scripture. But how much evil are we going to have to see before then? I don't know. But get busy for Jesus Christ. Don't worry about having to face God's wrath for seven years. You're not appointed to wrath. Christian, don't worry about it. And if you're sitting under the ministry of a hireling that's telling you, you better get ready and you better, you better be prepared to survive because you might not make it. You might fall away and you might not be saved after all. You're sealed under the day of redemption as a Christian. And every post-tribber, if they're honest, every post-tribber has to be against eternal security. Every single one of them. If they're honest. Now you have some that are so brain dead, you know, like Stephen Anderson, he teaches eternal security and that you go through the first three and a half years. Because he's very unintelligent. Sorry. <laughs> you know, the guy doesn't know the Bible. Don't worry about it. You are God's purchased possession. John chapter 10, verses 14 through 16. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, look at this, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. What's Jesus talking about there? Gentile believers. You're looking at one. I'm not Jewish. Some people think I am, but I'm not. I'm not Jewish. Okay? My ancestry is German. Alright? I'm a Gentile. I'm that other, that, uh, what does it say, other sheep. I'm one of the other sheep. And I'm going to be brought along with Jesus because there's one fold. One. One body of Christ. Not so in the time of Jacob's trouble. Look at the other uh, pre-trib rapture moment video. There are two folds. There's the Jews, 144,000, and then there's the other people, the Gentiles, in that time of Jacob's trouble. Right now there's one fold. So what's going to be the trigger for the rapture? Revelation chapter 4, verses 1 and 2 says, after this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet, talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately, you know, in a moment, the twinkling of an eye, immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. The redemption of the purchased possession will be finished when the Lord Jesus Christ has enough sheep for his fold. When he says, That's enough. Then he'll say to his sheep, come on out. And we're going to go right up there. Actually, over there, excuse me, that's north. We're going to go right over there. Right through the sky. To be with Jesus Christ. Why? Because he's going to redeem his purchased possession. He bought us with his own blood. He can't lose what he's bought. Jesus isn't as forgetful as we are. There are times we buy things at a store and then you end up losing it and stuff, you can't find it. Not Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is not going to lose what he purchased. That is another reason why the body of Christ is not going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. So, what you need to do 
is you need to get zealous for the things of the Lord. You need to get zealous about witnessing. You need to warn people about what's coming. You can warn them about the evil that's coming and stuff, the time of Jacob's trouble that's rapidly approaching, and say, if you want to get out of the thing, you better get saved. Quick. You better get saved very, very fast. But now let me ask you a question. If the body of Christ was going to go through part or all of the time of Jacob's trouble, why would there be a need to look for Jesus Christ? We would know when He's coming. You just say, the Antichrist is revealed here, sign the peace treaty with Israel, so we'll just time it out three and a half years from now, or seven years from now. See? It doesn't work. It doesn't line up with our church age doctrine that we have right now. Jesus Christ is the one that brings out the body of Christ. And we don't know that time. In the time of Jacob's trouble, the people don't know the day or the hour, but they can know the specific time period. They can know the month. They can know the year. But they don't know the day or the hour. It's different. you got to get the differences of the Bible. Rightly dividing the word of truth. When you see things that are different, you say they're not the same. There must be a division here. It's just that simple, people.